Nextcloud 18, it will become much easier to build your own components and automate your, your task. How you can do this will be presented by Bliss in his talk, Building Nextcloud Flow. Have fun. Yeah, thank you very much, and good morning to day two. So yeah, about building Cloud Flow. First, maybe uh, one sentence about Nextcloud. In case you don't know it, it's an yeah open source platform. Meanwhile, that was initially uh, built around syncing and sharing files, and now it's yeah sort of like an uh, open source 365. Well. Um, yeah, alternative. And uh, Nextcloud Flow, this is, um, or the ambition is to have a flexible and user defined event based task automation. So, um, what we try to do is, with this is have maybe something like. Yeah, the, this is the stream. So this is the stream? Got, ah, okay. Yeah, of course. Button. Sorry. Um, um, where is it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Oh, okay, that's better, I guess. Okay. So if you maybe you know stuff like if this and that, where you have a component that triggers some event, something happens. And you have some criteria, and then something else should happen. This is what we try to do here. And um, previous to Nextcloud 18, which will be released in uh, January, um, we already had something in place, but it was far more limited. It was yeah, limited to files, and only administrators could set those flows up. And we were having basically four. Uh, use cases or four actions that we could do with that. It was um, blocking files, it was tagging files, uh, converting them, and running a script. So, and um, yeah, after the UI was a little bit scattered, uh, the mechanism that was providing uh, interface for different apps that they could implement it, and if you would have then such an app enabled in Nextcloud, you would have one, two, three, four different or more entries in their settings. So this was not so very nice. So these uh, limitations we wanted to break. And um, the yeah, goals, or the objects then were, uh, to have a nice user interface uh, that's kind of not too complicated, where you can uh, rather quickly click those flows together that you want to have. And not only for administrators, but um, also your end users should be able to configure such flows. Uh, maybe not everything, not just running arbitrary scripts, um, but on the other hand, maybe they should be able to write something in their conversations in next our talk. Um, still, the rules that were already set up that should still continue to work and it should be extendable um, because we want to kind of provide more and to give you the opportunity to have um, yeah, different triggers that uh, can be acted upon. And so this is the state here from one, two weeks ago, I think, um, how the interface looks like. You are logged in as a regular user and the flow settings and uh, here um, this is the event. This is yeah, should kind of cause this flow to work. And uh, here we have now um, check, so the uh, constraint. And what will happen eventually is kind of to write to a conversation in Nextcloud flow. So in this demo, file creation, for instance, was uh, configured, and then it should be written into. And this will be now shown here. So uh, the user now yeah, creates these events uh, themselves, but this is not, of course, uh, limited to owners of such files. But uh, if it's also shared or publicly shared, this would also create this event, obviously.
So yeah, this editing happens. And in a few seconds, we will go to uh, next cloud talk. That's yeah, this um, chat or yeah, conversation solution. And here, uh, the bot was uh, writing the lines into it. So this is how one flow basically works. And this is yeah already in. And uh, further, I want to go down into details how this works internally. So that's why we had the demo up front, and we go then deeper and deeper. And we will also see how it's possible to create own components for Nextcloud flow. And right. So everything's based, of course, on Nextcloud the server. And we have this workflow engine, how it's called, that kind of provides or knots together all these different parts. And these are separated into these three things. Uh, the entities represent basically the action, yeah, the trigger of, uh, that's causing the flow to happen. Uh, the checker, they are therefore to, well, check the constraints, yeah, the criteria that you configured. And the operations, eventually the action. So these are the terms that we use uh, in the code. But basically, it's yeah, action and event that that we say. Well, on, on top of it, of course, there's a web interface. And uh, yeah, kudos to my colleague Julius, who did everything that's actually user visible on the front end. That's the magic, real magic. Okay, so. Um, flow cycle, kind of to have it also uh, visualized in this way. So we have an event that happens that's re represented by this entity. Yeah, and this is um, yeah fired, and the workflow engine that becomes aware of it. Right, there was an event listener activated, and then it acts. It uh, instantiates um, these different components, and um, yeah, the operation candidates, it's as those that are configured for that event that was fired. And so, yeah, in stage it happens. Uh, the entity sets a uh, context, so gives more information to this uh, service that's called rule matcher. And then the next step, um, the event handlers were called, and they also get access to this rule matcher. They, from there, they request the rules. So the rules that are the whole sets that are configured in the UI. And uh, the rule matcher, when it was requested, it does the um, execution checks. So uh, that could be uh, which uh, is the correct tag set, is the request time correct, or does the user have actually access to that object that fired the event? So this happens, and it filters the possible um, yeah, operations, and it returns them. And whatever's left in there, that can be actually executed, like written into the conversation room. Okay, so the engine is the cure part. Um, it's a yeah, central point that kind of takes the registrations of the components. We have a couple that are, yeah, well, built in, but everything can here be extended by their own apps. Um, like uh, the example for, of um, writing to this uh, talk conversation, this is also in the talk app, so that's not built in itself. Yes, um, the listeners are set up automatically. Um, so that it always kind of listens to the post event. So if and something has already happened, then um, this listener will become active. Uh, there are some special cases um, where an operation kind of needs to become active earlier, this is a case for a tagging or for the uh, file's block access because, yeah, you should block a file before it's uh, being accessed or downloaded. And we come to this a little bit later again because it offers the flexibility to, to go beyond this. Um, 
yeah, the um, engine that provides the information and yeah, takes care of the heavy load, the complicated stuff, or also the boring stuff. Um, yeah, the housekeeping. So yeah, uh, let's start then here on the right side. What you have seen uh, before in the screenshots, or um, yeah, the action that is being then done. That's uh, defined in an interface, it's the I operation. And um, in this implementation of it, we provide yeah, a part that is being visible for the users. Um, the scope, so the scope means here, uh, at the moment, is it a rule that's defined by the admins, or is it a user-based rule? And um, yeah, the validation takes place here in the event handler. So yeah, on the event when it kind of should do its stuff, then this is being called. And yeah, there are two um, refinements of it, the I-specific operation. This one is yeah, limited to a sp yeah, very specific um, type of e event. And um, yeah, this is, for instance, um, the, the PDF converters can only act on files, so that's limited to, to files. And the iComplex operation, this is a little bit more advanced. Uh, it uh, yeah, does more stuff of its own, um, like its own listening logic, which I said before is necessary for, for the uh, files block access, like this a firewall thing that prevents you kind of to um, have the files outside of Nextcloud. And yeah. This does the stuff by its own because it needs to interact already deeper in Nextcloud. So, here we have an example, um, a code example of uh, the PDF uh, converter. Um, and this is the, the first part of the implementation of this interface. Get display name. Well, it's clear, there's a description, and it also has an icon that's being presented. It's uh, quite straightforward. Then the next part is uh, the available scope, and an int is being passed in here. And there are constants, admin or user one, and it simply returns um, where it is available for. In this case, true, so it yeah, can be con set up by both administrators or users, so regular users. Um, to have counterexamples, the uh, external script runner, it's only available for administrators and posting to conversations only available for regular users. And here's an validator. So um, it gets uh, some parameters. Um, you see here the possible modes. That's what comes into the, the back end from the user configuration. And it just checks whether that's properly configured. And if not, an exception is being thrown. And if everything's fine, then yeah, it just passes. We have uh, the on event, that's uh, the listener itself. And this is yeah the real task, the real uh, logic that uh, the operation is actually being run. The PDF converter in this part first it gets uh, the nodes somewhere. That's yeah, a bit trivial or boring. Um, so the node, that's a representation of a file. And then it just makes some um, check what it should be done. And in the end, it adds a background job that will be then later called by or executed by cron because, yeah, PDF conversion can take a little bit, so you don't want to have it um, in a yeah, regular user action, like an upload or uh, yeah, editing a file in, in the web. So that's why this is being delegated to run a little bit later as a background job out of the user request. Yeah, it's a nice specific operation, so this is only available for all the files. Oh. And a different example is the access control, right? Though that's things that can block the files from being accessed outside of Nextcloud. And uh, here it gets a trigger hint. 
um, which is then shown instead of the event chosen, it says when the file is accessed. And on event, um, this can just be a no operation. And in this case, it's a no operation because it does things in a different, in a deeper layer of Nextcloud. So that's why, um, first, it's not being called here anyway by the workflow engine, and that's why we don't need an implementation here. But the magic then, or the logic happens in somewhere else. That's then very custom to the app. Yes. And um, of course, it needs to be, ah, yeah, that's a registration. Um, here, it's a connect hook on the file system. This is where it happens and where a storage wrapper is being um, registered. So that's what the file access is doing. So yeah, it goes a different way. And this is one of the flexibility types and option and mechanics that the um, um, Flow Engine is being offering to you. Um, but all operations that have to be registered so that we become aware what is actually there and that it can be also shown and displayed in the user interface. And yeah, this snippet is what it's doing this. It's a um, yeah, add listener against this event. That's a constant as well. And yeah, when it itself kind of fires this event because it needs to be presented on the web interface, then it just gets uh, the class and in the last part, um, the um, uh, JavaScript part is also being loaded so it can um, show its option later in the user interface. So yeah, and this is the front end part. Um, also this is, yeah, mm, yeah, very straightforward uh, because there are different uh, defaults that you can use and don't need to do much more. So that's kind of to be a little bit uh, comfortable for, for the developer. But again, here it can be also over, um, um, over, overwritten by some yeah, own necessity, necessities if you have them. Yeah, they also do their validation. Um, they can have different, yeah parts and everything is a view component here. Um, we have also here snippets for this at the first part. Um, it's an um, automatic tagging operation. It gets, it says I have an uh, icon of my own and I have a color. That's a green one here. So this is what is being then shown in the selector. And Further, it has the operations. There are none because it's just a picker. That would could be, uh, I think, um, yeah. No, uh, uh, let's skip it. Um, we have the options here. That's an own a component of the tag, and that kind of uh, loads available tags that are there in the system and offers you the um, chooser to to pick them. So this is what it um, looks in afterwards. Right. Yes. And uh, when should it be done part? So the action or the, the trigger that should or that is um, can be selected. So the I entity, the file again is the uh, yeah, most common example. Um, in this implementation, you also need to provide some user-facing information, display name, etc. Um, you can also give the events that you're compatible with and provide some context. Uh, the file entity, we have an example here. It's a name and it's an icon. And here are uh, descriptive events. And they just give one, again, one label that is being presented and the actual event that is being listened to. So um, all these file objects, they throw different events, when it was created, written, etc., and uh, we divide them by a namespace and with the actual name. 
and similar it is for the uh, mapping event. And so you see we have here just generic entity event and uh, this is an implementation of that one. It's an event name and the display name, just what we gave there to this um, yeah, um, class, this generic entity event, which is yeah, also um, convenience implementation that's available in the public API. So in uh, Nextcloud, we have in our namespace, that's this part, there are three yeah, three, three roots. OC, that's all the internal values. OCA, that's all for applications. And OCP, that's the part that's available in a yeah, PHP API that can be consumed by all the apps. The rule matcher itself um, is being also prepared by this entity because it will provide the context this here we get first the file node um, dependent on on uh, the type of event that was being called because uh, some differences so we get the node so the file representation we add it to the rule matcher and then also the operation can take advantage of it and um, for those that's also an old function that we need to take with us um, we set the file information. In most cases, so at least if it's not about files, you don't need uh, this line, but just the upper one. And if a um, yeah, file is not found, then it obviously disappeared. So we just silently pass it because it's usually not a narrow case that needs to be handled. Like it will, could have been deleted in between or so all made unavailable, so it doesn't make sense to cause more um, work or awareness to the administrators. There's a legitimation check, and it uh, will figure out whether the user that's passed by UID here, um, whether it is allowed to have access to this entity. And that case of the file, first we check whether it's an owner, and if not, whether it's, uh, it's a shared recipient. In that case, we say, yeah, it's fine, or not. Yes, and it can also provide additional information. So that one was especially needed for the um, spread, for the, yeah, for the talk operation, because um, it would be very cumbersome for every yeah, um, and operation to kind of figure out what text should I write here and yeah, what are the specifics. So this logic we also placed into the entity. So it can get the display name or it can get some display text. So this is implemented for file just a little bit longer. So I um, took out the get URL a function and it will uh, provide the um, file URL, the internal file URL. That's basically it. And then, yeah, the, the operation that is working against this can take advantage of this information. Well, and the last component, the checkers, uh, that are those that uh, set up the constraints, um, they are defined via the I check interface. And um, yeah, they can or they should uh, offer the option to um, yeah test against certain characteristics of the entity. And so, um, first method that is to be implemented, which identities are supported. File is one case, um, but you don't need to. Um, at anything, you can just have uh, yeah, a generic a checker. Uh, for instance, everything that goes against a request because it's available via Nextcloud right away and it can be against any event you can check yeah, anything about the, the web request that is being done. And also here, for which scope is this actually available? Admins or users or both? 
as we had them before. Eventually, there's the validator um, that gets two parameters. One is operator, as you see, and the other one is the value that's being passed. And yeah, here we have one example of um, uh, group one, the lower one, whether it's in a certain group. This is being checked here. And the first one is just, yeah, very basic is or is not. Yeah, um, that's the validation and then executor itself. Yeah, this being the logic. So f let me uh, make it a bit more clear. So the validation that only checks whether the configuration itself that the uh, user enters in the interface, uh, whether this yeah matches or this is fine with uh, what we know. And this one is actually then uh, the test that is being run when the event happens. So first, before we had checked whether the group is already existing, so whether we don't have an outdated value here, and when a flow is uh, yeah, being evaluated, we s will check whether um, the user in question is actually in the group. Yeah. And this part is also exposed in the web interface, so also this one needs to be registered there. And also here again, um, it works as a Vue.js component. And also here we see how it's being registered. This one is a, a file size check. So that's all really code um, that we have in Nextcloud. And it has its own operators. So that's not an is or is not or match or match not, which works against strings, for instance. But this one uh, checks yeah, against the file size. And yeah, it has a name that is visible and one that we use um, in the backend code to, to check against. Uh, there's a placeholder, so a hint, yeah, what you could offer, and uh, the validator itself for the front end, so that before you try to save it, you already know in advance whether it's going to work or not. Uh, yeah, and then it looks like this. The file system tag that has a custom component um, it works as uh, is and is not operators. Otherwise, it looks very similar. But um, the difference here, um, it doesn't have an own component, but the file tag, uh, file system tag, it does. And um, it itself, yeah, just implements in this um, multi-select dropdown and takes care of loading the values itself, so that's what's more special than the simple file size thing. Yes, so yeah, actually that's already from my part. I was uh, yeah, quite faster than I thought I would be. But if you have any questions about this, then I'm yeah, very happy to answer them. So everyone who wants to go ask a question, raise your hands. I will come to you. Um, <coughs> thanks for the great talk. Um, just a qu small question for yeah. my understanding. Um, the workflow uh, will be in the way that the person can click it together, or does, uh, does one have to program it like you just showed the sing uh, single events? So for the... Well, there are two sides, of course, for this. For the end user, it should be uh, clickable. Like I was showing in the video here. Um, so this is uh, how already how it's the, the presentation for the end user. Yeah, for now, it's for a regular one. For admins, it looks similar. So just your choices are then different depending on what's in, in the back. But it's um, yeah, done in a way that you can extend by yourself as a developer. So we already have also interest from others who want kind of to, to make, take advantage of it. And um, what I'm working on currently, but it's not done yet, is also one thing that could set up endpoints so that you can have yeah, requests or webhooks from outside coming in and yeah, work on that. So 
it's yeah um, the user part is yeah it should be easy to to click together and for the developer part, part it should be also comfortable uh, to get your own components one of those done yep okay any other questions yes yeah. uh, just yeah, okay probably a very simple question uh, can directories be observed um, you can observe directories ideally by tagging them. So you create a system tag and assign it to the directory. Okay. And then whatever happens inside, it can be watched, yeah. Okay, because um, the background is uh, when I hear workflow solutions, I think of uh, things from print and publishing and there a lot is done with observing directories and converting from one directory to the other. And yeah. That would something that would be expected from when when they hear workflow solution. Yeah, yeah. In the in the backend, it's like this, or in general, it's like this. That if a file somewhere in a directory structure changes, that also changes the modification times of the directories. Uh -huh. So it also then um, uh, issues the yeah file has a changed event because directories are also files, right? Everything is a file. Yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, so it's easy kind of to select them by having a tag, but then yeah, the if, um, yeah changed yeah the file changed event that will be also then executed for directories, of course. Thank you. You're welcome. Can you maybe name uh, some scenarios with, that you have in mind, and some? Can you like list uh, some actions that can be taking place? Like, can a mail be sent or just to get an idea of what actions can yeah. be chosen? Yeah, so right now um, we didn't have um, yeah, much time possibilities kind of to extend it over different um, entities or yeah, actions. Um, but as I said, it's, it's being worked on and we have already said that part that kind of rides into a talk conversation. And one idea that we also were having, but it's not, not done yet, is that if you, um, yeah, what do one goal would be? If you mention someone in a conversation, it would check against the calendar if the person is actually present or maybe on vacation or in a meeting, and then would just give you some informa informative line in, in, in yeah. The conversation. Uh, this user is currently not available, so that could be yeah one thing about uh, collaboration. Um, yeah, with the uh, web requests stuff, it could be that you configure on GitHub or any other service a webhook that triggers if something happened wherever that uh, next cloud will be notified. Yeah, and then it can. Um, yeah, right now it makes only sense also to, to write into a conversation, um, but you could also have a log file, for instance, that is being then written into it, yeah, if, if you imagine this, or, yeah, or you create a file or something like this. So that's not implemented, but this can all be done. So the idea was behind it was to have it so flexible that you could basically do anything with this, right? Um, yeah, what, uh, what you can see on other solutions, they are, uh, there it's more common that you have a very fine-grained things that you can pick, like an uh, issue was created in GitHub and then write an email here to us. So and we, do a, we don't do it so fine-grained because um, yeah, we just decided kind of we had uh, more rough, so in this case, it would be also an external request, and then just need to configure this somehow to do something. So it's, yeah. um, but basically, anything would be uh, possible with this approach. And um, if you want, you can talk to Jos later. We have um, also a boat here at this open infrastructure orbit. And he's very good in kind of telling you what really is possible. And he's also having a talk later. Yeah. Hi, um, thanks a lot. I, I just wondered, when, once you've clicked together one of your workflows, how does it look like? How is it stored? Can the user actually use, take it with him? Um, so if we set up an, another Nextcloud, 
do I have to click them all together again, my uh, precious workflows? Because these things can um, become quite mission and critical. So I would expect some kind of script mm -hmm. I can uh, read and copy and maybe even code. So I don't have to click it if I know what I'm doing. Yeah, well, that's uh, an interesting idea. Um, it all uh, so it's saved all in the database that uh, Nextcloud operates against, and um, there are I think th altogether there are three tables uh, where the rules are defined, where the constraints are defined, and where the scopes are also defined. But um, this web in this configuration interface. Uh, that all works with um, yeah, OPI calls. So you could indeed create a different client that would yeah, read out or write uh, workflows, that's possible. And that also would make, you, uh, make it possible for you kind of to take out your flows. So, yeah, so there's um, no nice way right now to do it, but there's a yeah, programmatically doable way to do it. Yeah. Okay, then if there are no, not other questions, thank you, Bliss, for the talk. So give him a big applause again. Thank you very much. Thank you.